Welcome into my first video. My name is Kraft of the StarCraft Journal, which is where I'm sure you're reading this. Uh, this is my first video that I posted that has to do with something I want to discuss. About a week ago, there was a great question about whether or not flocking a Dobsonian optical tube assembly, or OTA, uh, was a prudent thing to do, and it was a great question, and I, I felt like I gave it a decent answer, but I realized that if you don't know how a Dobsonian works, that question could really kind of seem out of left field. So I wanted to make this video, and in fact this is the second video because the first one didn't record audio, so God willing this one is uh, because I don't want to do it a third time. So for those of you who are completely new to telescopes, I want to go over a little bit of how a Dobsonian telescope works. And what a Dobsonian is, is it's really a Newtonian type telescope on a special kind of mount called the Dobsonian mount. It's also called an altitude azimuth mount. You can twist it from side to side and move it up and down. It does not track across the sky like an equatorial mount would. Uh, we could go into more of that, but I really want to talk more about the telescope. So the features of a Dobsonian slash Newtonian telescope, I'm just going to go ahead and call it Dobsonian because that's what was specified in the question. Uh, the first part of the Dobsonian that we have is we do have an opening aperture. And, uh, you know, if I actually made it a color, you could see what I drew a little bit better. So let's try that again. There's our opening aperture, and please excuse my fantastic art skills. Uh, this is the point in the telescope where the light is actually going to enter. And then on the opposite end, we have an optical surface in the Dobsonian telescope. This is the one true precision optical surface which is going to focus light to the point. So after that, you know, we have the walls of the telescope, and that's pretty much going to compose uh, the outside and what you would see of the telescope. So you also have a secondary mirror and an eyepiece in the scope. So how is this all going to work? Well, first and foremost, uh, the stars that we're the light we're getting from stars are really far away. So you can think about it. Whenever it gets to Earth, they're going to be pretty parallel. So we'll draw some parallel lines to show what the light looks like coming in. So there's a couple little crappy arrows coming right into the scope. So this line, this light's going to go straight back and hit this mirror. This mirror, the entire purpose of it is to focus light at a point. So it's going to hit this mirror and then it's going to go up towards this secondary mirror. Same thing for this side. What it's doing is it's taking all the light that hits the back and focusing on the point. And uh, again, this is just a crude drawing. It's not going to focus right there or the mirror would be a little different. But the main purpose is to get all the light to reflect in through this eyepiece. So all of this stuff in the aperture we've concentrated into this small bit of space right here. And that's what allows us to see uh, dark objects. So what does it look like whenever you look through an eyepiece? Well, let's go ahead and draw a little uh, fake eyepiece here. And there's my circle eyepiece. And you know, inside this eyepiece, uh, let's say we're looking at a very uh, dim part of the sky. So you got the black, and you've got a few dark stars. Uh, not really dark, but dim comparatively uh, in the background. And that's all well and good if you have a black sky, because now we have decent contrast and you can see the stars. The problem arises is when you start dealing with light pollution. And how does this work? Well, a lot of light pollution and the stuff that we're mainly concerned about is light that comes into the optical tube assembly from different angles that aren't uh, parallel with the rays from whatever star we're observing. So what's going to happen when these come in? Well, all of a sudden these things are going to start bouncing off the wall. If the wall has any sort of re reflectivity, they're going to be all over the spot. And eventually these these light rays that are bouncing around are all going to, not all, but some of them are going to end up falling inside of the eyepiece. And what's that going to do? Well, it's going to actually start, you know, making the sky look not black, but rather gray. So instead of this nice blackness here with the star, now let's uh, show what a gray sky would look like. And there you go. What happened to all the stars that we had? Well, they're the same color now, so we can't see them. There's no contrast difference. So this is where the flocking comes in. What we're going to try to do is we're going to try to absorb every single one of these extra light rays as we possibly can. Can we absorb them all? Of course not. That just doesn't happen in physics. But once we start knocking these things out, let's get out of there. Let's get that one out of there. We absorb those photons. Now, all of a sudden... Oh, uh, look at that. We just darkened up the sky in a very badly drawn sort of way. But those stars that we couldn't see before, there, look, they're kind of showing back up again. We might not be able to see them as well as if there was a true black sky, 
but you can see them more so than you could with the light pollution. Now, is this going to eliminate 100% of light pollution? No. And the big problem is going to be is when you get uh, into like heavy light pollution inside of the cities. Now, why does it matter what kind of light pollution? This is non incidental. This could be from street lights and stuff. The problem with heavy light pollution is a lot of it comes from the sky. So let's say we have look there's the horizon there's where the city is and we are looking at some starlight that's coming uh, let me work on this color a little bit it's coming down from the heavens Shoom, there come the little rays of light and you know our little telescopes right down there now uh, the light rays that are coming from these sides and stuff yeah we can kind of get rid of those but with heavy light pollution what's happening is these molecules in the sky are absorbing light and they're re-emitting it and the problem is is some of this light that they're re-emitting is coming down parallel uh, with the light from the stars so if the light pollution is coming in parallel uh, we can't stop it I mean it's gonna hit the mirror it's gonna go into the eyepiece and then all of a sudden uh, again we run on the same problem there your skies are gray and they're not quite black but in suburban areas where you're not going to get as much of this light pollution and you're worried more about, you know, a Joe Street Lamp over here that's by your observing site throwing photons there and, you know, some other random light, yeah, flocking's going to work great for this. For heavy light polluted areas, it'll work, but not as much as you would hope. But it goes along with the same, like... What's good horsepower for your car? Well, every single bit of extra horsepower helps. So it's never a bad idea. And why is it never a bad idea? It always absorbs some photons. And you know, even a bigger plus to this is the fact that to install flocking, I mean, you're either gonna have you're gonna have to take your tube apart. You're gonna have to take the mirrors out. You're gonna take out the eyepieces and uh, possibly the finder scope and you know whatever uh, the focuser, depending on you know how you're planning on covering this. You can either cover it with material. Or or some people paint it. Uh, the point is, is you're going to have to get really familiar with your scope, which is a good thing to know how to do. If you know how to disassemble your scope and put it back together, that means you can take care of a lot of maintenance and you can make it work to the best of its capabilities and even more to the point, you know how it works. And knowing how a telescope works really helps. So if you didn't understand what a Dobsonian telescope was or what we were talking about, I kind of hope you got a little bit of uh, learning done on this video. And if you have any other questions, feel free to click the uh, Ask Me a Question button on the right hand side of the blog and you know I could either make another video or I could just answer in text depending on you know how well this is received all right thanks a lot